so capacity allocation is very important in railways. Uh, the main reason is uh, is very very basic. So instead of uh, what we have on the road, you just let the cars go and then they queue and then yeah, we don't really want to have that on the railways. So we want to have a pre-allocation beforehand so that we have a plan. It's usually done in, as part of the annual timetable. So we allocate capacity one year beforehand. During that process, we basically prepare this annual timetable that we run according to uh, during all the year. Uh, there are actually initiatives in, 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 uh, in Europe, for example, TTR, timetable redesign, to put some flexibility in this process. But it's, it's an important process. Capacity allocation is very important for railways. So for the regulated railways, it's even more important because uh, instead of having one monopolistic company that runs trains and allocates capacity and do the maintenance, we have a separation or a vertical separation between running trains, train operations and infrastructure management. And in this, in this particular context, uh, capacity allocation should be more of like a transparent a transparent process where you, you lay the, the ground for all the different operators to have access to capacity in an equal and transparent way and still keep the efficient, the, the, the goal that you, you want to have an efficient annual timetable as before or even better. To, to make an annual timetable has been already very challenging to do within one monopolistic company. Now with, with the vertical separation, it's, it's, it's an, an, one additional layer of challenge, which is this transparency that you want to have a transparent um, uh, process. And the problem is that uh, right now, for example, in some countries, you have misalignments in, or even conflict of interest between the infrastructure manager and train operators. So you want to be as transparent and as 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 um, uh, as equal as possible for the different train operators, there are some 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 um, uh, disequilibrium basically between the different operators. For example, some operators they have more political power, some operators they have more resources, and you really want to give the opportunity to all the operators in in an equal way. So you, you want to, for example, in, uh, give some incentives for newcomers, new entrants. Uh, so that they can compete and provide services in competition with the incumbent which has more resources and more political uh, leverage. Yeah, as, as I mentioned before, there are many challenges, but what you, you say here in this question are the big opportunities that we have. So AI, um, artificial intelligence and uh, data analytics, digitalization, all of these things they are an opportunity for the infrastructure manager to, to achieve these goals of allocating capacity in an efficient and transparent way through, for example, following the real-time information about the infrastructure, uh, about the train movements, about the customer demand. So all of these are some sort of input for the infrastructure manager so that it can implement uh, instruments, policy instruments, or even um, uh, new digital tools, um, uh, so that they can they can um, they can nudge or or put the output uh, for for the allocation of capacity in an efficient way. Uh, generally speaking, it depends on the local legislation. In in Sweden, for example, where I, where I have done my PhD, it's more about optimizing or maximizing the social benefits, which which is basically captured by reducing the cost for investment, the operation costs. Uh, in, in, in comparison with the, uh, the increase in accessibility, uh, reduction of emissions. Uh, so it's, it's basically a framework that where you can com compare the costs and benefits. So cost benefits analysis is one way, one framework where you can put together all these data uh, that, that you get from different uh, stakeholders. In, in, a, in, in a is and use them in a way to optimize your output, to optimize your, your, your supply of, of, of traffic. One way that I, I used, for example, these combinations of data and, and cost-benefit analysis was about, uh, in uh, planning subsidized traffic, which is uh, subsidized by taxpayers' money. 
So what, what, uh, what we have done in, in this study is actually use the demand estimation, the OD, the OD matrix or origin destination matrix from uh, tickets. So people are using basically their tickets, the, their validations of tickets are used as an input so that we can estimate the flow of passengers. And from that, we use economic evaluation or cost benefit analysis to, to optimize the frequency of different lines. So in a sense, we want to have a timetable or a, or a, or a supply of, of, of subsidized traffic that is at the same time minimizing the operation cost and opt, uh, increasing or maximizing the, the social benefits. So this way you, you use a framework, cost benefit analysis together with input data such as demand data to optimize this supply or this allocation of capacity. Yeah, the, right, the high speed is actually a, a very big uh, um, opportunity for us uh, to, to tackle climate change. And it's not all about speed, it's about the right speed in the right place. So it's all about the context. Where are you going to implement this high speed, uh, this high speed line? And you have to take into consideration all the local context. And that way you can decide the optimal or the best speed that can provide uh, you with the best social benefits in, in that particular context. Yeah, I mean, without any hesitation, it's uh, Shinkansen, the Japanese uh, railways. I think Shinkansen, uh, they basically uh, uh, shaped the high-speed uh, culture in the world and also the culture in Japan shaped Shinkansen in a sense. It, uh, one, of the, one of the aspects of it is punctuality, is comfort, it's, uh, it's customer service at the center. So. Yeah, that's, that's my ideal uh, railway, basically, high-speed line. Yeah, my top priority is to be able to profit from my time on board, so to work, for example. And two aspects for, for on, on this is comfort and punctuality. So if I have these two, it, it's great for me.